Well, you know what? Let's be wholly honest. It does not feel any better this morning, does it? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Depends obviously where you, when you pick up this video. I feel like crap as well this morning. Uh, you know, my voice uh, not feeling too great. Uh, not really helped by yesterday's awful performance at Ibrox by Rangers. Um, you know, it's it, even in the cold light of day. I've sat on that this morning. I've got to kind of uh, watch the game back, and it doesn't get any better with the watching. Uh, you know, there's yes, the first twenty minutes we did do very well. Um, I thought, you know, we should have scored early on. We should have been two or three up by uh, by the 20, 25 minute mark. But then we did the usual, which doesn't, which always confuses me. And it's something that uh, was it Kelly of Livingston said on on Wednesday night that Rangers go at you for the first 15, 20 minutes, and then they just sit back and go into a lull. I don't get why we do it. I don't get the reason for it, uh, especially if you haven't scored. Why, is it kind of like I don't know? We, they try and then it doesn't work out, and the heads kind of go down, and they kind of just give up. I don't know. Um, you know, I've watched back some of those chances. Uh, Dessers, how the hell he doesn't score that goal, I do not know. Ball, beautiful ball over the top by James Tavernier. And Tavernier wasn't great yesterday, but great ball over the top. Dessers, unforgivable, doesn't even work the goalkeeper. He does not even work the goalkeeper. I mean, that's that's the biggest sin for me. You know, as, as a centre forward, yes, you miss chances. I get that. Ali McCoist missed chances. Chris Boyd missed chances. Nacho Nova, Nikita Jelovic, they all missed chances. But you look at a lot of what they did, they work the goalkeeper. That's what they do. And you, you put one of them in that situation yesterday from that ball over the top. You put Novo through, you put Jelovic through, you put Boyd through, you put McCoy through. You put, look, even you put Morelos through last season. And I'm talking about Morelos, and I'm going to talk about Cholak in a minute as well. He works the goalkeeper. He makes the goalkeeper make a save at very least. But Morelos, the shot from Dessers, like... It, it had the people people at the back of the stand more terrified uh, than than the goalkeeper or the net. It was just absolutely shocking. The lad is just look. I got slaughtered for saying when he signed. I said this kid, this guy is not up to it. He is not a good forward. He was with a team that got relegated last season. We've signed a player from a team that got relegated. You look at Michael Beale's business that he's done over the summer. You look at the players he's brought in, with the exception of Jack Button. Jack Button, you are exempt from any of these comments, but. He's brought in players and he's playing in a style that would suit QPR, the way, you know, relegation battle, fight, battle, scrap, uh, you know, just do enough to get by, try and win 1-0, scrap it out, just, you know, play, hold the ball. Just It's what QPR would do last season to try and stop themselves from getting relegated to League One, which for a team like Rangers is simply just is not good enough. But to be honest with you, the team haven't even got the battle of scrapping them. Um, you know, John Lundstrom, look, I've slaughtered him recently, but he was one player yesterday who actually tried. Yeah, Abdallah Seema, another one. I'm going to give him some credit. You know, Abdallah yesterday, you watch him, he gets that goal, yeah, but you also look at him, he's also, if you actually, you know, watch what he did during the game, he's yelling at people, he's shouting at people, he's screaming at people. He's not happy with what's going on and fair, fair play to him. You know, Jack Butland as well was doing his absolute nut during this game, yelling, shouting, calling at, calling players. Jack Butland was more of a leader on that pitch than our supposed captain, James Tavernier. Yeah, James Tavernier, yeah, I did not see him yesterday at all do anything that a captain should be doing on that pitch. And it's disgusting. How, how he is still captain of this great club, I do not know. That man is not fit to be captain of this great club. He is bringing shame on this great club, the role of captain on this club. James Tavernier yeah, is is a player who in the past has done great for Rangers, don't get me wrong. And look, I, I, I was I was a fan of Tav, but he's reached a point in his career where he's struggling defensively. He hasn't got the leadership skills anymore. He isn't a leader on the field. He needs to be, the armband needs to be taken off him. But unfortunately, if Beal stays, Beal hasn't got the balls to do it. You know, it seems that he's untouchable, James Tavernier. And there's still Rangers fans who will defend him, who say, I love Tav, he's a great captain, whatever. What the hell are you watching? You are not what you... You're either a Celtic fan in disguise, or you, or you're watching, you're watching a different footballer. Because are you watching the videos from '55? I don't know what you're watching, really. Um, chances galore in that first half. Like I said, we should have won. Then Aberdeen go against them on a play. Just defence from the set piece again. I mean, oh my god! I mean, how many times have we conceded that goal this season? How many times have we let that goal in this season? It's just ridiculous. Set piece defending was non-existent yesterday. And I'm going to just have a massive sympathy for this man here yesterday. He pulls off save after save after save, and he gets absolutely no help from his defence whatsoever. I think it was the second goal by McGrath. He pulls off a great save. No one following in. No one clearing the ball away. No one giving a, giving a shit. No one giving a toss. I was like, I believe have the ball back and have another go at goal. 
The third goal as well, Bona Barisic, you are a disgrace, mate. You fall flat on the floor and you're crying for a free kick. It's never a free kick. You watch the game back, watch it back. He's not even, he's hardly touched. He goes down like he's been shot. Just gives up. It's what I've been saying about Bona, and I've been called out for this. People have called me out on X and Twitter and social media. For my criticism of Bona Barisic. Bona Barisic is a bottle job. He is an absolute bottle job. He hasn't got the bottle for the fight. He's a disgrace, absolute disgrace of a human being, a disgrace of a footballer, and he shouldn't ever play for Rangers again. Unfortunately, Ridvan keeps getting injured, so we've got no choice, but I'd rather have Adam Devine at left-back or Johnny Yefeko when he's fit at left-back or someone like that because, what a Barisic, mate, you're a disgrace. you just you absolute disgrace the name of Rangers. You really are. Um, look, I know, I get it. We've got an injury list. We've got this injury list here, and you can see all the players that are currently out. You know, Campwell, Raskin, Lawrence, Matondo, Danio, Roof, Yilmaz, Dowell, and Jack. And yes, that is going to play an influence. Yes, if you took McGregor and uh, whatever he's called, you whatever I can't remember his name now, Kyoto, Kyogo, whatever he's called, out of their team, and Maeda and that like, and Carter, Carhorse, Vickers out, they would struggle. But Look, they've got nine players missing at the moment as well. And is it affecting them the way it's affecting us? No. Was that Celtic team that came to Ibrox in that old firm game a strong Celtic team? No, it wasn't. Yet they still beat us. You know, we can have all the excuses in the world. But that Rangers team that was fielded yesterday had more than enough players, more than enough money spent on it, more than enough in wages, more than enough in talent to beat the Aberdeen team. That's the first time that Aberdeen have won at Ibrox in 26 years. 26. That's... You've got to go back to the last century, the last time they won at Ibrox. You've got to go back to the 90s for the last time they won at Ibrox. That's disgusting. Absolutely disgraceful that we let them win yesterday. And we did let them win yesterday. Absolutely let them win yesterday. Now, Bill, Kenny Miller made a great point yesterday. Kenny Miller said that the recruitment has not been good enough this summer. And apart well, with the exception of Jack Butland, obviously, Butland's fantastic. You know, if Butland was to leave in January, I wouldn't blame him. I mean, why would you want to stay here and, and put up with that crap week in, week out? Unless Beal obviously is gone. And I'll talk about that in a minute. I'll talk about that shortly and what I think will happen with Beal. Uh, it's not good news, guys, I'm afraid. Um, but you look at this. This is this is last season, right? On, in red, you've got the forwards we had last season. In, in blue, you've got the forwards we've got this season. Right. I'm not going to criticise the Neo because I think it's unfair. He came in, he scored. He, he didn't get a real fair crack of the whip, I don't think. You know, Beal, for some reason, kept on starting Serial Dessers, who is an absolute car arse, absolute donkey, wouldn't get a job, for, wouldn't get a game for my local Parks team. Um, I mean, the guy is just, he's absolute shite. I mean, Dessers is absolute shite. If he plays on Thursday night, boo him. Every time he touches the ball, boo him, because he's useless. Um, but you look at that on, on, the, on the left there. Morelos, Cholak, Sakala, Roof and Tillman. Bills replaced them with Danio, Dessas, Lammers, Seema and Roof. Now I'm going to take Seema out and I'm going to take Danio. Roof obviously is 50-50, is but you've got the rest of them there. Is that any better than what we had last season? And that those five there weren't good enough to win us the league last season. They weren't good enough to win us the league last season. And this five on the, on the right here aren't good enough this season. They're worse than that five on the left and in the red. So how can it be that the players you sign are worse than the players you let go or sold? I don't get that. If you sell players or you allow players to leave, you do not replace them with worse players. I mean, I put Cholak and Dessers opposite each other on purpose. Cholak, by this stage last season, 13 goals, two assists. Dessers, three goals. Three goals. And two of those deflected in off him and he knew nothing about them. And the other one was a penalty. Cholak as well had, had garbage minutes near the end of the season. Uh, four, in, in his four starts, he only had four starts at the end of the season. In his four starts at the end of the season, he scored three goals, had one assist. Cholak was sold because he didn't fit the system. He didn't fit Beal's system. Well, I've got two questions. Number one, what is Beal's system? Because I don't think he's got one. And number two, when you've got a goal scorer, goal scorers necessarily don't fit a system. What they do is they score goals. And how on that li who on that list now in blue is going to go and score you as many goals as Antonio Cholak. I don't know. I really don't know. Um, as I said on a previous video, as I've said it on Twitter this week, or X or whatever the hell it's called, um, I'd take Morelos of last season over Dessas. I really would. I'd seriously, I'd take Chris Boyd in his condition now over Serial Dessas. Um, that's how bad Serial Dessas is. I mean, he's just the worst 
He's one of the worst players I've ever seen in a Rangers shirt. You know, you look at this league table coming out of today, coming out of the game today, and you look at it there with with three points behind St Mirren. And St Mirren, funnily enough, is our next league game away at St Mirren, a game that we could quite e if if Michael Beale is still in charge, and I honestly think he will be, we could easily lose. You know, we are seven points behind them already, and they're a team that have changed their manager. They're changing their style. They're going through a transition. They've got nine injuries, the same as we've got injuries, but they're not struggling. They're not looking pish on the pitch every week. They're finding a way to win every single week. They've only draw lost points in one game, that draw they had against St. Johnston at home. They've won six out of their seven games. And I hate the fact that I'm kind of praising them, but they are so much better a team than us. They are miles better than us at this moment in time. And that's the worrying thing because they're not actually that good. St. Mirren are a better team than us at this moment in time. St. Mirren. I mean... How disgusting is that to say that a team like St Mirren, with less financial resources, less of a size, are, are better than Rangers at this point in time? You know, this team, this team, you know, people say don't write off this team. I'm writing them off. They are crap. They are one of the worst Rangers teams I've seen in 20 years. They are just absolutely appalling. Uh, you know, really, really poor. You look at our next games coming up. We go to Limassol on uh, Thursday night. Um, which, you know, is not a gimme by any stretch of the imagination. We then got St Mirren away before the international break. Again, not a gimme. We come back, we play Hibs at home, Prague away before Hearts at home, Dundee away. If Michael Beale isn't gone, if Michael Beale is still in charge come, come that Hibs game, you know, I can honestly see us having another two losses out of our, let's go for the three games, out of those Three Glade games upcoming, St Mirren, High Hibs and Hearts. I can see us losing two out of those three games easily if Beale is still in charge. Um, I can't see it going to Prague and getting anything if Beale is still in charge. And I'll be absolutely wholly honest with you. I think he'll still be in charge on Thursday night. I think he'll still be in charge against St Mirren before the international break. I think this board will try and limp it through to the international break with him in charge. And he might win the two games and then they'll be like, oh, it's OK again. We can keep going with Beal and whatever. And then we'll, we'll lose another game and we're back in crisis again. And the board need to act and they need to act swiftly. If they fail to act now and they fail to do something, Monday morning they need to come out and say, Michael Beal is no longer Rangers manager. If they do not come out and say that on Monday morning, they are negligent. They are showing that they are gutless, spineless and have no backbone at all and have no right running our club. I thought, realistically, you know, the appointment of Michael Beale was a lazy one. Yes, I get that. And Stuart Robertson and Douglas Park are a pair of morons for giving him a four-year contract. Stuart Robertson, you are an absolute, complete and utter moron for giving him a four-year contract. You really are. But at the end of the day, he's got to go. They've got to get rid of him. If they don't, they are quite quick. They're obviously accepting that we won't win the league this season. They're happy to be second best. And it's in danger of Scotland becoming Germany. It's in danger of Celtic becoming Bayern Munich and us becoming Le Leipzig or Dortmund, where once in every once in every blue moon we'll compete and win the title and because Bayern are poor and that's it. And if we're happy with that, well, you know what? If you're happy with that, you're not fit to run Rangers because you're not. Rangers should be dominating Scottish football again. That's the way it should be. And this is not acceptable. Not acceptable at all. Um, I don't, you know, people say, well, who do you get? That's not for me to decide. At the end of the day, you know, I echo what I said on Club at 22 yesterday. It's not for me to decide. You know, I haven't scouted managers who are out of work. I don't know who's out of work at the moment. I don't know who's, you know, potentially looking for a move at this point. If you ask me, who do you want as manager? Jurgen Klopp, Pep Guardiola, uh, Mikel Arteta. But they're not going to come, are they? They're not going to come to Rangers. That's who I want, but it's not going to happen, is it? But look, at the end of the day, that's for the board to sort out. And they need to get someone with some experience, someone who's going to come in and do something that hasn't been done at this club since the days of Steven Gerrard. Organise the team into a coherent attacking unit and a coherent defending unit that actually go out there, have a style on the pitch, have an identity that we can all identify and say, that's how Rangers play, that's the system they use, because at the moment there is no identity, there is no system, there's nothing. It's shit. From beginning to end, it is poor. And... You know, any any Rangers fan that says, oh, you know, keep faith faith with Beal, it, 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 it's getting better. It's not getting better. It's getting worse. Um, you know, I, I, I despair. I absolutely despair. Anyone who wants Beal to stay, I, I'd love to tell me why you want Beal to stay. And if it's just because, oh, well, who else are we going to get in? That's not an argument for keeping somebody. That's a bad relationship. 
you know that's like saying well i'm only staying with him because there's nobody else or i'm only staying with her because there's nobody else well that's a shit reason to stay with someone isn't it at the end of the day get your head out your asses and look at what's happening to our great club it's been dragged into the mud by this man it's been pulled apart by this man he's making us a laughing stock and i'll tell you something guys i'll tell you something for a fact other side of the city they are absolutely loving this they are loving this they are absolutely wetting themselves laughing at us but it's not right and i hate it and it makes my blood boil and the final thing guys on this rant that i've had this morning um michael beale you called out our fans yesterday you absolute asshole how dare you call out our fans yesterday you know it's harsh to boo them off at half time. No, it isn't. You're losing 1 0 at home to Aberdeen, a team that is second off bottom in the league, a team that haven't won at Ibrox in 26 years up until yesterday. And you're saying it's harsh to boo them off? What planet are you on, mate? What planet do you live on? And then to say at the end, we need more from the fans to get behind our players. What else do you want from them? What else do you want? Seriously. 50 odd thousand turn up week in week out ibrox cheering on yelling screaming shouting for our players thousands follow you away from home and yell for you every single every other week and you want more well how about you give us something to get behind we want more from you we want a performance we want an identity we want some tactics we want some skill we want some players that actually want to play for the club we want a manager that actually knows how to be a manager not a bloke who'd be better off selling used cars at the car supermarket down the road I'm sorry, but he's, he's got to go. He's an absolute disgrace. He's a cockney used car salesman. That's what he is. He's an absolute joke of a player, a joke of a manager and a joke of a human. Guys, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you for watching. As always, guys, if you think you've earned the sub, please hit that sub, ring that notification bell. And as always, two things, guys. Number one, smash the like. Number two, remember, we are...